Who was the toughest man to strike out in history? Joe Sewell, you're right. He struck out only 114 times in 14 years. That's once every 62 times to the play. When October the 9th comes around, Joel Sewell will celebrate his 86th birthday. This Hall of Famer didn't reach the major leagues until after his 30th birthday. But in addition to being a great star in the Negro Leagues, he became one of the greatest stars of the National League with the New York Giants and also one of the finest in the game of baseball. Monty Irvin. In 1951, he had 121 RBIs to lead the league. And then there was that first game in the World Series. Four hits, and he stole home two. Not a bad way to start the series. second baseman ever to play the game with the best hit and run man ever. And he was also a pretty good manager. Billy Herman. Three twenty two hundred hit seasons, a three oh four lifetime average. In nineteen thirty three his four hundred and sixty six put outs was a National League record. This man's given name was Vernon. Well, I don't think any of us know him by that. It's Lefty, Lefty Gomez. One of the most refreshing personalities ever to play the game of baseball. His 6-0 World Series record was the best ever. He won 20 games four different times. And, and there's so many stories about Lefty Gomez. One of the best is when the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon and they found a little white object. Lefty was given an interview that day and he said, they're trying to figure out what it was. I know what it was. It was a home run that Jimmy Fox hit off me in 47. This man was a great home run hitter, but he was also one of baseball's most graceful first basemen. The big cat, Johnny Mize. The only man to hit 50 home runs and strike out less than 50 times in a season. The first man to play in the All-Star game for both leagues, 359 home runs and a 312 lifetime batting average, Johnny Mize. Only two men in the history of the National League have won the most valuable player award three times. One of them is already up here, stand a man usual. The other one, right, Roy Campanella. Campy. Quick, agile, cat-like, with a rifle arm. One of the finest athletes and one of the finest gentlemen ever. Roy Campanella. other seasons and he finished out of the first division only twice in those managing years on August the 20th the man who has a ball field named after him in Tampa will turn 78 years of age and he looks great doesn't he it took this man a while to earn the recognition to make it to the Hall of Fame at least on the ballot but those who played with him and against him knew his value from day number one. Roy Campanella said, he's always been in my Hall of Fame. He was my captain. Pee Wee Reese. The numbers don't tell the story about Pee Wee. He was the leader. His value was as a catalyst for the Dodgers. And those who were close to the great Jackie Robinson acknowledged that Jackie never would have gotten through that time had it not been for Pee Wee Reese. Many of us remember that Willie McCovey, who we're honoring today, yeah. broke in on a July day at Seal Stadium in San Francisco. Didn't have a bad day, he only had four hits. He hit four ropes all over the ballpark. 
But how many of us remember who the pitcher was that day? A future Hall of Famer, Robert Roberts. This man was always a smart pitcher. Number 36 with the Phils was the backbone of the Wiz kids. 286 career victories, a 20-game winner six times. 21 or more complete games on eight different times. And yeah, Willie did get the four hits off him, but later that season, he beat Mike McCormick one to nothing and he gave Willie the collar. <laughs> Those who saw this next Hall of Famer say he was the fastest man ever to run the base pads. Cool Papa Bell. He was a switch hitting center fielder from the Negro Leagues. A man who turned 83 on May the 17th. And he still dresses with the best of them. There are so many stories about Cool Pop. I asked him yesterday which ones were true, and he said, well, you named the ones that were true, but there was one that said once he hit a ground ball to second base, it was called out because it hit him. And then there was the greatest one that said, Cool Papa Bell was so fast, he could make it into bed after he turned off the light switch before the lights went out. This Hall of Famer turned 88 years of age about three weeks ago, and he celebrated it by singing My Old Kentucky Home before a minor league baseball game in Louisville. Happy Chandler, the commissioner. The plaque that former Commissioner Boo Q and Red reads simply, Iron Will and Honest. And that's what Happy Chandler was. He served as baseball commissioner for six years, and of course, he provided over, presided over the entrance of Jackie Robinson into the game of baseball. Even though this next man turned 70 in April, he can still kick higher than any one of us. They called him country. Enos, Country Slaughter. He can do it. A consistent 300 hitter, he gained fame for his dash from first to home to give the Cards a World Series win against the Red Sox, and that was 40 years ago. He learned his greatest baseball lesson in 1936, though, and it's a lesson we can all take. That's how he earned the name Hustle. In 1936, his manager, Eddie Dyer, Saw him sulking going back to the dugout. He said, you tired, young man? And Enos said, no, sir. But that night, he stayed up late, thinking that I'm never going to walk again on the ball field. And in 19 years in the major leagues, one year shy of four decades, he never did walk again on the ball field. That's a lesson we can learn from every one of these Hall of Famers. They hustled, and they gained our admiration. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1986 returning Hall of Famers. What a moment.